Oh, yeah, we're back to racing New Jersey Motorsports Park for the Motul Superbike Class here in Moto America. You're getting ready to watch race number one. Don't forget to click on subscribe and that bell to get instant notifications every time we post new stuff. Enjoy the race. It's time for Superbike race number one. Motul Superbike Class as turn one awaits. Here we go. All right, Matthew got that bike launched a lot better, but Josh Heron coming from the second row. Look at him, Greg, going through the middle of people. Unreal. Josh Heron's going to lead him down into turn one with Cameron Bobier trying to slot himself into second. You look at, is that Cam Peterson that's just gone up into fourth? I think so. On the Brochers Chicken Honda. So he's come from what, Greg, row three? Yeah. And you can see this is Tony Ilias's bike. So Tony has moved himself up into third right off the bat. Where did Matthew go, Greg? Because he got such a good initial launch. Matthew's in fourth, fourth. So, and so Tony just got past him. These first two guys trying to take off. This kind of looks like a pit race. Yep. And Josh Heron won that race. Yes, he He's did. He's trying to get out to that jackrabbit start and get away from the Fox. The biggest difference there is he had some wet conditions on slicks that he had to deal with. Look how tight he goes into turn five. Nice and tidy into there. All these guys don't make too much out of turn five by opening up the radius that much there. They want to just get the bike in and out. Josh Heron on a flyer right off the bat. You sure? I bet you're going to see Cameron be a little bit patient as he's being right now. Matthew Skultz back in fourth. Cameron, you're talking about Cameron Bobier in Sorry, second Cameron spot, Bobier, not Cam Peterson yep. in yep. fourth. This is this is the Josh problem that we had yes. last year, and now we have a Cam issue. Two where Camerons. We have two Camerons. Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah, yeah. So we'll try to keep that clear for you. But Cameron Peterson up there in fourth spot, fifth spot right now in the Genuine Brochure Chicken Honda had a good launch, trying to put that thing on the podium. See, and this is what Josh Heron does so well. He he gets out to these starts, and he's just a jackrabbit. And it puts a lot of pressure on the other guys because they remember what happened at, uh, you see, just a little bit out of the seat, both that right and the left for Cameron, who also had a tip over this morning in our warm-up session. So he's just kind of, the last time he was on the bike, he was in a pickup truck bringing his bike back to his crew. So his first flying lap right now for Cameron was just getting his feet back underneath him. Tony Elias there in third. And I'm... Looks like uh, I'm happy to see Matthew just kind of letting this race come to him. No, no early issues. He was very fast. It's, he's and got 23 laps still, does Matthew, to try to close this gap back up. And we've seen him, you know, win races from back a little further in the wet. So he's got two race wins to his credit in the Motul Superbike class, does Matthew Skultz, including when he was on a stock 1000 last yes, year. Yes, last year at Barber. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we'll start looking at our initial splits, our first couple splits here, and we'll see. Tony Elias now is going to try to do something with Cameron. He's thinking about it as they go into turn five. And uh, does he get himself up underneath? No, oh, pretty close. Just he needed just another he needed another half a wheel there. And I think Cameron would have seen him a little bit more possibly and and just kind of moved. Because look at Tony oh. going straight to the apex in turn six. Can he make that work with yep. the rain tires? Make, he always makes it work. He always makes it work. Greg. He goes right to the apex, gets the bike slowed down. Now he needs to go after uh, the guy leading. He knows the only way he has any hope of continuing this championship moving forward is to catch Josh Heron, try to put some people between him and Cameron, and try to win races. So 56 points, the difference at the moment. So if Tony Elias finishes ahead of Cameron Bobier, it's not gonna be enough to wrap up the championship today. But for Cam Bobier, he's kind of looking towards the future. He's saying to me, if I can get out of here with 51 points, and the reason we say 51 points, Jason, with 50 available, is because in Moto America, if you tie on championship points, the first tiebreaker goes to you, amount of races won. And right now, Cameron Bobier has seven this year. Tony Elias has seven. Yep. And Cameron, it was weird. It looked like Tony was kind of messing with the shifters. They came out of that last corner. And uh, I bet he thought that Cameron was closer than he actually was when they went into turn one. And he really closed off the en entry to that turn, like we've seen him do so many times. Cameron had a fast split in that third split of the leaders. And, uh, you know, he might just hope that Tony can pull himself, pull them back up to three-second lead for Josh Heron right off the bat. So he's he's on his way, and he's hoping now, Cameron is hoping that Tony can pull him a little bit closer. Getting you in the action with our onboard camera shot. You can get a good perspective of just how far back Cameron Bobby is from Tony Elias. If you can run that same pace, it's really difficult to to latch onto the rear tire of someone in these conditions because your visibility. So much missed, huh? Mm -hmm. and, and if you look back, Matthew's done a good job of just kind of recovering. He's got his feet back underneath him now. 
And we've seen Matthew come from the back in these superbike races in the rain before, where he kind of starts chipping away, moving forward, and he realizes he's got a lot of laps to try to catch back up to these guys. Right now, I'm just looking at our split times. Perrin's making up about a half a second in the first sector of this track. And you can see a little mistake there from Tony. Sure did. Goes outside that big uh, black patch. Sometimes you get into these corners, and if there are patches that you haven't ran over yet, and you see yourself going towards them, it's just easier to pick the bike up and go around them. Yeah. Uh, and, and that's just really because of the lack of wet weather practice we've had. We haven't had the chance to go through those patches. Last thing you want to do sometimes, Greg, is go through that Especially with those on shiny, the thir third yeah. lap of a race. Those when shiny, shiny sealer patches, correct. you're just like, oh, yeah, yeah. That's exactly right. 39-2 for our leader. You see Cameron Bovier now in the in somewhat of a draft there, trying to catch back up. But this guy in fourth that just went across, he's at a 40.2. Great onboard video or great onboard shot right now of what these two guys are kind of going through. But... They still There's lost, rain, Jay. Sorry. Yeah, a lot of rain. You're exactly right. A lot they, of rain coming they, down now. They lost 1.8 seconds, Greg, on that lap. Mm -hmm. On that lap, 1.8 seconds to Josh Heron up in the front. He's absolutely ridiculous yep. right now. He is just rushing flying. it. This is the battle for second spot you're looking at. Yoshimura Suzuki's Tony Elias, your national champion, locked in a championship battle to try to regain that number one play. It looks, it looks, you know, daunting at this point because of the amount of Amount of points, though, Jay. Who, who just went purple in our first sector, Greg? Uh, Matthew Stoltz. Yep, he's coming. And, I, and, and when he starts to get a little bit of confidence about him, and, uh, you know, now we just got to hope. I mean, he's 7.2 seconds behind Heron uh, right now. So now we just got to kind of hope that Heron hasn't pulled away too much. Tony Elias has made a little bit of a break on Cameron on this lap, although Cameron seems to draw him back in in the last little sector of this, of this lap. But Matthew Stoltz is actually coming right now on these other guys. And you can see how influenced that patch is for Tony. He went to run over the, the edge of that patch, and he didn't like it. He stood the bike up a little and then re-leaned the motorcycle in. But this guy right now on the Yamaloop Westby bike is uh, is coming forward. In a big way right in, now. Yeah, in a yeah. big way. 23 laps scheduled for this race. And I say scheduled because as the rain is coming down right now, traction seems to still be available. Yep. But if the skies really open up and it starts to pour in a lot of standing water, you it could be a different story. Here it comes. This is a good look at the draft on the yep. front straightaway. Cameron didn't just, again, not in the draft draft like you would see in the dry. That's right. Well, the thing is there is that Cam the Cameron picks up a lot in the last quarter of this lap is where he makes up all his time. By the time they get to turn seven, Cameron has lost a little bit of time the last time through. Uh, but by the time they get through the last sector, he starts to gain that advantage over Tony again. So this is all through turns three section here. And it looks like Cameron feels a bit racy. It's the first lap that these guys haven't lost a lot of time uh -huh. to one guy. And the 11's right yep. on their tailpipes Math now. Matthew Skulls basically ran the exact same lap time as our leader, Josh Heron. So the thing for Josh, he just went across the line. He's got a 5.7 second lead. His team will probably put a plus six up on his board or at least a plus five when he comes through. As a rider, you're watching that board, and the second that board stays static or stays the same, you know that the guys behind you are at least going the same pace or even a little bit quicker. I think if Matthew can get through, look at the gap that Tony pulls in this sector. See how big of a lead he's got? Yeah. Now Cameron will pull it back all through this next right, left, and the S is leading onto the front straight. Tony looks a little bit more tentative from this flip over from the right to the left because of those patches that you see on the track. Keep in mind, 5.7 seconds ahead of what you're watching right now is Josh Heron. He's leading this race, and he is absolutely ripping, not giving up any time. Just set the fastest sector three split of this race, even though the rain is falling, continues to fall. So Tony Elias, number one plate, Yoshimura Suzuki in second Look spot. Look at the drive that Cameron gets on Tony going through the last corner. Now he's got to try to do something with Tony, but he's just not quite no, close enough. Yeah. And you can see Tony just kind of looked down at something. I'm not sure if he was checking lap time or whatever. The hardest part now for Matthew is just to be able to find a good, clean spot to go by the guy that he knows is racing for a championship. And Matthew's won championships uh, where he's from, so I know he knows that there's always going to be a little bit of a genuine respect that you have for somebody that's still in a, in a battle for the championship. And the two guys in front of him are both battling. Look at Cameron just draw up on the back of Tony through there. So there are places where Cameron is definitely better than Tony, and there's a couple places where Tony's definitely better than Cameron. Yeah, the question is, where do you pass? Here we go. Where Matthew's you're good. Gonna, Matthew's going to have a go because he's going to have a look down the inside. And he's able to kind of squeeze in between Tony and Cameron. Good, solid, clean pass from Matthew. Beautiful. Absolutely fantastic. That moves 
The South African rider Matthew Stoltz on the Yamalu Westby Racing Yamaha into a podium position third at the moment as he's going to go attack the number one plate of Tony Elias and try to go chase down Josh Heron if he can make it work. And you can see this little sector here, Matthew hasn't let Tony get away, kind of the way Tony gets away from Cameron in that spot. So wouldn't be surprised to see, yeah, he's having a little bit of a look, uh, but this next left, Matthew keeps it really tight all the way through this next left where Tony likes to let it drift out just a little bit. Um, so you can see that time through, Tony kept it a little bit tighter. But now we got this run to the front straight away. And let's see if Matthew can draw up on the back of him as they come through here. This is where, where, oh, he's getting close. This is where Cameron was really a lot faster than, than both Ooh, these looks guys. Looks like we had somebody coming into pit lane too when they were coming through that last corner. Matthew's right there. There he goes, Greg. Are you going to go on the brakes? He's, he's going to have a go. He has to. Oh, he's you can close see it enough. pumping too, Jay. There you go. Well, what he's doing, Greg, is he's just letting off the lever, just trying to, he's trying to make that committed pass, and that's what he did. Now, 8.7 second lead for Josh Heron at the front. Let's see if Matthew starts to, we'll be able to look on our screens here and be able to look at the split times. We'll be able to let people know if he's closing up. So Matthew Stoltz, Yamalu Westby Racing Yamaha, the privateer effort. Works his way into second spot. Another look at the pass. You can see the front end bouncing up and down. That's what I was saying. Just, yep. it's like, okay, I got him. Nope, I need a little bit more speed. Nope, 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 nope. And then finally what you do is you just kind of commit and you kind of let go of the lever with the hopes that the bike's going to stick because he wants to make a clean pass, but he has to do it now. We're on lap six of, I believe, what do we got, 17 to go still? So, right. yep. so 23 lap race. Uh, now he's given himself time to chip into this, this sort of eight second lead. And, he, and, he, and he's not going to be, he doesn't have to be in as big of a hurry Ooh. to do it. It looked like, to, like Cameron, Cameron was in there deep, wasn't mm -hmm. he? He was into that turn a little bit deep. And, and Tony that. now is going to just get right on the back of Matthew. But this is where the two Yamahas of Skultz and, and Cameron seem to be a little bit better. But Tony's so good at just latching on. Latching on and latching figuring on. it out. Exactly right. Yeah, yep. yeah, yeah. He, he definitely can. And so he's saying, okay, you know, sometimes racers get that attitude. If the guy in front of me can do it, I can do it too. Yep. The thing is, there's a danger to that in the rain because setup really makes a, a big difference. And if you get antsy, <laughs> excuse me, if you get antsy and apply too much throttle, you can find yourself Look spinning at Tony's out. Tony's bike moving around yeah. so much. And a lot of that looks like to me that Tony just doesn't trust letting off the brake lever through that last sector and just or that last turn. You can see Matthews in turn one a little bit deep. That time through, lap time wise, yeah, and talking still with him six after tenths morning, of a second, Heron over Skoltz. And talking with Skoltz after morning warm up, he was just talking about how much confidence he has in the front end of this motorcycle. Yeah. So he said he's okay with kind of getting those little bit of moments where you tuck the front. As long as it doesn't catch him out, he's okay with that movement. Yeah, but look at, watch Tony's bike. See it moving around? Yeah, a lot of speed. And, and a lot of that is because if you can carry a lot of roll speed and you have a lot of confidence in your bike, you can pick the throttle up. But when you overslow the bike a little bit, then you try to get on the gas harder, you're going to see the back end of the bike moving around quite a bit more. There's a look at the attack performance Heron compound rider, Josh Heron. 9.4 seconds the lead for this dude. I, apparently, he's addicted to winning races. Yep, got to love it. And you get a little confidence going. And the thing about Josh is he always just seems so prepared at the start. Like He always just gets to the front, knows what he wants to do, and he looks like he's riding so comfortable right now. Even looking at the split times of what we've got going, Matthew gained sort of half a second on him in the first sector and a little bit in the second. So Matthew's got clear track in front of him now. So it will be interesting to see but look at Josh's bike. Everything he's doing just looks really, really good right now. And you can see, Greg, it, it, even in the in the wet conditions, see how much Josh is really moving around the bike. He's hardly moving around yeah, on the bike at all. His body position is so really just in centered, offset. Looks very, very comfortable right now. And of course, clear vision from that belt helmet helps a lot as well. All right, now the race is on because we got a 39 flat just thrown down by Matthew Skultz. He gains six tenths of a second but he's got 8.8 second lead. Now, when you look back at Pittsburgh, what Josh Heron did so well is he got out to the front, took a few chances, did what he needed to do, pulled out that big lead, and they weren't able to catch back up. We kind of see that same scenario. All the pressure right now really is on Matthew Skultz. He's got to push in order to try to get that, that lead down. There will come a pace where Matthew feels, and he can see it, especially by his pit board, if he starts closing in, five tenths, six tenths of a lap. He'll be able to do the math and realize, I don't need to do anything more. Let's just keep this, this process going. Rain continues to fall here at the Motul Superbike Classic, New Jersey Motorsports Park. 
as we are getting to the one third of the way through the race kind of point <laughs> of this wet and soggy event with championships on the line as we're at the penultimate round of this championship and we're looking at Cameron Bobier, number six rider out of Roseville, California on the Monster Energy Yamalub Yamaha factory racing machine. Question about Cam's future too. He has not signed a contract with anyone just yet. We know that Yamaha's intention is to try to keep him here in the States, but there's opportunities overseas as well for Cameron Bobier. As we look at Tony Elias, the Spanish rider, kind of moving all over that motorcycle. And Jason, you know, for some of the riders who use a lot of leg when they ride in the rain, it's absolutely fantastic. But you also have to make sure that your, your boot and your foot peg connection stay solid in those wet conditions. That's exactly right. And you, you, you got to make sure that, especially in these conditions, that everything stays as solid as it can. 38.8, first guy into the 38s now, 8.3 seconds. Josh Heron responded with a 39.3, but look at the guy in third, 39.4. Right, as, yeah. as we get a good look at but, it, 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 it goes back to what you kind of what you're saying. But Tony just learns and latches right. on. Yeah, but all right. So between Heron and Skulls, as we look at Roger yep. Hayden right there in fifth spot, and uh, he got ahead of Cam Peterson. But okay, it's a half a second the last couple laps. It was six yeah. tenths, half a second. So you have to think to yourself: there's 14 laps to go, but he's got an 8.3 second lead. So half a second, he'd need 16. He'd need 17 laps that's exactly, he if he can catch him. Yeah, he needs more laps. But that's not to say that Skolty can't get a little bit quicker. Nope, it's not to say that at all. It's just that I feel like you have to take more risks because the guy at the beginning of the race took a lot of risk, pulled out that nice big gap, and so now when you're in second and you're charging, you got to take a few more risks, and he's doing that. He's purple in the first sector. Look at Raj and Cam Peterson. Tremendous effort from Cam Peterson coming back from that injury, running top six right now with Hayden directly in front of him. You can see Bobby Fong on the other Broster's Honda just back, just there's Bobby. Yep. So uh, Bobby's doing a good job as well, getting used to another new motorcycle and getting to race it in the rain. Had a slide off yesterday. I probably, I'm sure if you talked to Danny Walker, it was a little more than a slide off. Yeah, it was. But, it was <laughs> but, a little uh, bit, yeah. But these guys were able to get this bike back together for him uh, to come out. And him and Cameron were running around this morning together in the session. So uh, their times were very, very close. Cam Peterson there in the number 45 genuine Broster Chicken Honda is a race winner in Moto America competition AMA level. He won here in the rain on a 600 machine a number of years ago. So he knows how to get it done. And I think maybe that might have put a little bit more uh, excitement in his belly when he saw the rain. But racing a 600 in the rain and racing a full blown CGR 1000 RR Superbike, two totally, two totally different, different things. things. But Cameron's doing a really nice job right now. He's keeping Raj in sight. Raj also, good to see him a little bit closer up front than, than, uh, than he's been lately. Nice and aggressive. Yep. I, you know, Roger was really nice, aggressive riding in Super Pole qualifying in very similar conditions. Now, let's get back to him because i got to talk about Josh Heron. He, he's watching his board. He saw that it came down a second, so what does he do? He goes and fires off a 38.7 to a 38.5 fastest lap of the race from Matthew Skoltz. So it was only two tenths. He's in a little bit deep there. He's got that thing, no problem turn. See that? Now it looks like he's trying to change a map, possibly, Greg. You see yeah, looking over at his left wrist? Yeah. So it's either that or he's trying to dial in maybe a little bit of a, a break. Uh, so it could have been one or two things you can see. This is the neat thing about New Jersey. When you make that right-hand corner that he just went through, you can kind of look across, mm -hmm. and you can kind of see who's coming, who's where they're at. You don't really have to look back. You can just kind of look across, and you can see Heron was doing that just there. Right now, first two sectors, this guy's gained a whopping two-tenths. So the risk he's having to take to gain such a little bit of time back, this is his pass earlier it was Matthew as he went underneath Camp Peterson in turn five. Cam Bobier. Oh, sorry, Cam Bobier. Yeah, I, I told keep, you. Greg, keep, I told you. Keep helping me with that it's one. It's a Cam Dub. situation. I need help, all right? So I'll just say Cameron. Goes underneath Cameron into turn five, and then he set sail after Tony, and he made pretty quick work of Tony as well as they went down into turn one. He was able to just kind of get up underneath Tony. You can see, Greg, you're right. That was a very late pass, but Tony saw it coming, let Matthew through, and 38-3 uh, that last lap. But he only gained three tenths, 38.6 yep. for yep. Josh Heron. That's his fastest lap of the race again. Yeah, with Tony Elias doing his fastest lap of the race, but still losing another four tenths of a second to Matthew Skoltz. And, and this is where your crew becomes so important because you don't want them to, you, when you're leading a race, 
you don't want your crew to make you feel like, wow, this guy's catching me in a big hurry right now. So when you when you get on the board, if it's really not plus seven or plus eight, you've got to make sure you put the point in there because if he's only gaining three tenths, Josh is going to be able to figure that out fairly easy for himself. So a good experienced crew like, like Josh has there with the attack guys is so key right now to get him the information that he really needs. Saw Matthew Stoltz kind of spin up the rear a little bit. There oh, he goes. There well, he goes. Big See, mistake. And that's, and that's just backing it in to turn seven, getting in there. And he also now looks down, not sure again, dialing in a map, dialing in some brake. But he got into the same turn a little bit hot. But he's got to do that. He's got to continue to push the pace. Um, and, and otherwise, he'll never catch Heron. And Especially right with now, Tony behind him, though. Correct. You yeah. know, it's nope, you, exactly right. You're doing two things. You're trying to win the race, but you're also trying to hold on to your second place spot. And with someone like Tony Elias, it's always a concern when and, he's and, behind you. And here's a replay. Get that last downshift. Bike starts to back in. But when you're on the edge and you're pushing, that's what you're doing. And he just ran his fastest lap again, did did Josh Heron at a 38.6. And, and he gained almost a full second, a full second on Matthew Skultz on that lap. So there's a look at Tony Elias, who's no stranger to winning here at New Jersey Motorsports Park. He did it uh, in 2016. The second time we visited New Jersey Motorsports Park in that year was race number two. And then he swept last year when we were here. And of course with Tony, you know, it's such a vast improvement, Jason. You remember when we were here uh, in April, New Jersey number one, we called it. And Tony got lapped. Yep. Or, or, Him and Raj both. And Raj is, both. It was like essentially lost in the championship that year. When you go back and you yeah. look at this weekend, they lost so many points. Uh, I think between the two of them, they only scored 12 points on two races. So this is a lot better effort right now for the Yoshimura Suzuki rider. And and I, I'm just I'm, I'm blown away by Heron right now. He's gone green purple in the first two sectors. So he's continued to pull away from these two guys. And there'll come a point where Matthew will realize, all right, it's just not happening. I got to take what I can get right now, and uh, and, and just try to hold off Tony because Tony will start coming towards the T end. Tony, he looks like he's closing the gap, Jason. Yeah, just I mean, a little bit. Yeah, it was it was 3.2. It's down to 2.6. Last time they came across the stripe. But of course, on our timing and scoring monitors, we see the actual time when they come across our finish line. But those split times that we have, we have three sectors split up in this track, can you know vary depending on how well you have each sector dialed in. Yep, and Heron's gonna run the fastest lap of the race again, a 37.9. So conditions are either getting better, sometimes it takes a little tire time for you to just really get used to uh, these tires coming in. Uh, on these conditions, but now he's out to a 10.3 second lead. Matthew's crew is probably going to let him see that he's lost some time. It's just too much risk to try to run down a guy who's running as fast as Josh Heron is right now. They've got that bike absolutely perfect for him. One of the things we look at as we take a look at championship points leader Cameron Bobier is the spray coming off that rear tire because that gives us a good indication of how much rain is on the course. In this particular moment, Jason, it just looks like the way the rain is falling in certain parts of the track, it's draining well. So yeah, it's wet, but there's still traction available out there. There is. And you can see riders taking advantage of it. Look how close Cameron's knees get into the ground, even with those larger knee pucks Alpine Stars provides for him. You won't see knee pucks that big in the dry, but a lot of the riders like that extra knee puck security, so they don't have to carry as much lean angle, but still sometimes create contact with the asphalt. Now, the other thing you have to think about is when we were here two years ago, Greg, I want to think that the lap times were almost some 10 seconds slower. It looks like Cam Peterson was able to get past he Raj. He did. He did for a and, while. Yep. And it, but now Bobby Fong's up oh, behind. Right. Yeah, yeah. 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 Sorry. See, now I'm helping you. Yeah, you See are. How that works? Yeah, I'm yeah, helping yeah. you out. Yeah. So Bobby Fong now has closed up onto the back of Raj, and he in turn is also closing up on his teammates. So maybe Cameron Peterson saw that he was getting closed up on by his teammate. And uh, Tony Elias is down. We've got no. somewhere out there. Tony Elias is down. He had the and fit between his teeth. There it is. And he's walking off. And Cameron Peterson will have seen that. Uh, Cameron Bobier, sorry, will have seen that oh, great. right break in front of him. Break the calculator up. Break the calculator yep, you gotta out. break it out, Greg. All right, so if we break out the calculator with Tony Elias' exit in this one. And that looks like turn seven where we saw, sorry, yeah, turn turn seven, where we saw both Heron and Skultz uh, back the thing in and lose a little time. Here you go. He's out of turn six. Now he's going down towards turn seven, tips the bike in and just loses the front, it looks like. So Tony falls falls over. And Cameron Bobier now, what was the lead coming in, Greg? All right, so it, it was 64. It, it, no, it's 56. 56. All right, sorry, so it's 56 points. Yep. The difference between first place and 
third place is six is uh, 11 points uh, nine points sorry okay so basically if Cameron Bobier was able to win this race he would wrap up the championship so in order to do that he would need Josh Heron and Matthew Skultz to both have disasters Ish issues look see, right Tony and and, and and look at Josh. That's when you when I watch what I watch, and you see him. He was trying to tip the bike in, but the thing was backing in a little bit. And with that bike backing in a little, he just made a, a mid corner adjustment there. It was so good to see. Um, right now, 11.4 seconds. He's in the 38s still after that last lap. Only two tenths slower than his fastest. Here you go, Greg. Here's a little live update. It looks like maybe of our points, and uh, you can see 63 points right now back to from between Bobby and Elias I believe if it ended now so but but what I'm watching Josh Heron do is just control this thing right now up at the front there's Cameron rolling around in third but knowing that his main rival is out so Cameron Bobby doing what he needs to do to get closer inch closer to the championship his rival Tony Elias hit the deck he's out also moves Cam Peterson, Jason, up into four spots. Great job. And Bobby Fong. And I'm going to tell you something. Genuine Broster Chicken Honda team would love a result in the top five. So would American Honda as they are still mulling over the decision to come back to Moto America for 2019. And they know that these oh, are. Oh, no. no. Bobby Fong is down. And you know what, Greg? I know he was pushing and he looks hurt, too, this one. This one looks like it uh, was a bit of a bigger one. Uh, I'm trying Fong. to figure out where he's at on the track. Let's take a look. Same spot. Look at that thing. Just back it. It just literally spun him up over the top. We've seen so many riders going into turn seven. You can see Tony's bike parked up over there um, next to the guardrail. But we've seen so many people lose the rear end of the bike going into turn seven. So this is Matthew going through turn six now. And we saw Matthew earlier just get a little bit loose on his entry into this turn. And uh, he's gonna he's got that thing nice and slowed down and controlled. This, this guy. This guy out front. Twelve and, just, and a half just seconds. And just doing consistent thirty eights, by the way. He's not even and look how just look how comfortable he looks on the bike. Josh Heron, fan favorite, attack performance, Heron compound, privateer Yamaha, Richard Stamboli and the crew putting this effort together. Heron third in the championship points right now. He's 45 behind Tony Elias. If he's able to pull off this win, that's going to close him down to only 20 points behind Tony for that chase for second spot in this championship. Here you go. Great look. A lot of spray coming off that bike still. As you look at the Dunlop tires, he's on right now. He's on a soft, soft rain front, medium rear. Combination, I think, just about everybody's on. Everybody, yeah. Yep, everybody's on that combo. So, uh, and again, look at the eyes. He's looking up that track. He just got a lot of feel. And I've always thought that Richard's bikes always look so good on track. He's got a very distinct color combination with that blue and that, that fluorescent yellow. Matthew now backed off to the 41.2 range. So you just get to the point where you realize I can't push anymore. He probably sees on his board he's got plus 20 seconds now over, over Cameron Bobier. So just try to get a good solid podium for his team now. The South African on a short list of riders that Yoshimura Suzuki is considering to replace Roger Hayden as he sails off into retirement. So every time they spin laps in this racetrack, it feels like, at least to us, that there's some kind of uh, importance, you know, some kind of emphasis on what they're doing. And this will definitely help Matthew Skultz in his quest to become a factory rider. As for this guy, Cameron Bobier, it's all about right now the chase for the number one plate to get that back. He lost it to Tony Elias last year. Tony, unfortunately, pushing hard to go try to close down the gap between himself and Matthew Skultz. Threw that one away. And I know Tony's gonna to be extremely disappointed with that because in these conditions, you've gotta just keep your head on straight. And oh, ride with the new somebody like off. That's Bobby. Is that Bobby Fong? Like he just got back up on the bike and and uh, yeah, you see him over there. That'd be Matthew incredible. Skultz. Yeah, he got... Like I hope that was Bobby, not yeah, Cam no, Peterson. No, it definitely looked like him. I already saw Cam go through. So... Uh-oh. Uh, Skultz, you looking down at something. Maybe he just kind of had his boot come off his shifter. He wanted to double check, but you know. Saw him making a gesture to his crew as well as he was coming through. And here you go. This is uh, this is going through the right hander. And if you look at, yeah, Greg, he almost he just ran up the inside of the curbing almost. You get in those little creases between the pavement and the curb where it comes together. Yeah. And uh, you know sometimes it can just kind of kind of throw you off a little. 
And also, Jade, like I talked about, you know, the boot, you know, the boot and the foot peg, if it gets yep. too wet sometimes. It's so slippery. You know, if you don't have like a really heavily gnarled uh, foot peg, like if you go and you visit Moto America Ray oh, 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 Jake oh, Lewis. Jake Lewis. And, we and he, was, he was battling with Gerloff. And the thing about that that's crazy is that they were actually catching, uh, Josh Heron was getting ready to lap Jake Lewis and Garrett Gerloff. And, uh, Oh, man, such a bummer to see Jake. We haven't seen him do this very often. No, not very often. haven't seen often. Jake tip over very much. M4 XR. You can see, look, Heron, just... Heron had already got through both of those guys, and he just got flicked off the high side. Come out turn five. Doesn't even know what he did. But by that gesture, he's just sitting there thinking, I don't even know what just happened. So M4 XR Suzuki rider Jake Lewis. In this one, he was, uh, I believe, in eighth spot as Josh Heron continues to just rip this field apart. Sam Bertorico, the number 17 rider, he actually came in earlier as David Anthony, if you're a fan of the fly racing, Kawasaki, David Anthony's out, Tony Elias out of this one, San Rico five laps down, and he's still out circulating the racetrack. Bobby Fong they have on our scoring screen with an X by it, so we think he's out, but. Yeah, and I'm not sure if he, I, I know that was him riding, so we saw him come through there, and uh, how about this guy's lapped up through seventh? Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> You know. I'm, I'm impressed with the, <laughs> with the with the speed of which he's transitioning this bike. He's got so much faith in these in these Dunlop tires. It's so impressive. Yeah, but if you if you really you see the, the movements he's making, everything's very easy. You know, there's Bobby, got the bike back. So I'm sure he's. Yeah, it's that's bummer to see him so beat up. That's the second one. He of course is supplied with that A and Easy D Air suit. So. When he high-sided, the airbag in that suit activated, and that is designed, of course, to, for that upper body region. So it's nice to see at least the upper body moving, but you know, Bobby might have hit his head on that one and yeah. taken some other bumps and bruises as well. No question, no question. Josh Herring going around, it looked like Max Flinders. Flinders, yep. Mm -hmm. Good to see the 88 out there racing around. He's at in a solid top 10 finish, or top 10 position. Max Flinders ahead of Danny Eslick, so Flinders right now in ninth spot with Eslick, who's still nursing some bruised ribs back there in 10th. So four laps to go in this one. This guy's on the rail. I love it. I just like watching it. It's just fun. It's it, and as easy as he's made it look and so much bike control. He's just got so much bike control. Let's talk FIM World Endurance, which you've won two world titles in. Have you ever had races where you had a whole hour stint in the rain yeah. type of thing? All the time and a lot of times in this stuff we would get double stinted as well because the rider that was coming on after you maybe wasn't as used to the conditions. So when you get into a rhythm, uh, they would just come in and it was the it was your worst nightmare because when you'd come in for your pit stop and you wouldn't see another rider there getting ready to get on, you'd Seriously? be thinking, oh man, I gotta go back <laughs> out and do another hour. But that said, you get into a rhythm much like these guys have done and, and like Josh Heron has done. You get into a rhythm and you just start feeling really comfortable and uh, you gain a lot of confidence from that. And as a rider, I know that it definitely helped my sprint racing later because I didn't get a chance to race in the rain very much in America at all. So getting a chance to do World Endurance, was it, it gave me that experience. And all the experience that these guys are getting now is, 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 is really good for them, especially if you've not done it before. A lot of the guys we've seen, like the Herons and Skultz and, and, and Bobia here, they've had these kind of experiences before. Here's a great look. Cam Peterson, just would love to see Cam Peterson just do what he's doing right now. Just get a top four finish for the Brochers Honda guys, Danny Walker, and all that team and crew that worked so hard to try to get this bike further up front. We love the fact that American Honda wanted to come back into this series and field the CBR 1000 RSP2. And this team continues to grow and grow. Like it's, it's literally, you know, Scotty Jensen, that entire crew, they just keep chipping away at it. They just make these big jumps from race to race to race. It's, it's one of these situations when we looked at General Brosa Honda, Chick and Deb, we're like, if we had 20 races this year, yeah. they would make such leaps and, and bounds, they might be a, nor a regular podium contender. And look at Rod. Rod's still pushing. He sees Cameron up there, so he's doing his best to try to catch up. But going back to what you were saying, they, they signed on a, basically a rookie superbike guy in Cam Peterson, whose father, Robbie Peterson, I remember from back in the days, uh, very, very um, successful in his own right. This kid's got a lot of talent. I a think lot just, of talent. I think just channeling it, and I think just uh, being able to put it together on the day. These kind of conditions right now are so hard to ride in, and it's just going to show you how good Cam Peterson is. I had dinner last night with Cameron Bobier and Matthew Skultz, and the topic of this rider right here, Josh Heron, came up. 
and what you just kept hearing coming out of the mouths of these guys was talent. How much talent Josh Heron has. He's unbelievably talented. He's able to do things on motorcycles that even wow his competition when he's racing in and amongst them. And for him to be able to do this in these conditions as well as what he was able to do at uh, pit race when he had slicks on and it was what I mean he's just absolutely putting on a display here it's incredible his race lead now is extended to 25 seconds because he continues and continues to push the pace well you and I had some private conversations with me is with even with Josh himself I've always always said that I think Heron could be even better than he is I think he's he's got so much talent so much feel um, that that you, you would never ever go up to a rider of his caliber and go, hey, why don't you change this or why don't you change that? <laughs> but there's things that I, I just kind of catch my eye with him. Uh, and today, just watching what he's doing now, um, is, it, it almost it, it makes me even believe what I think, the things, some of the things that he could do better that I think are even more in his future. It's scary. You know? It's and, scary and, if he can get better than this. Well, he's got so much talent. And, and there's and always room for improvement for everyone, right? There's always, always room for, to, for trying to see things. And, and they're little things, really, that, that you can see. Um, but now he's going to have two races in the two race wins in the last two rounds. Um, <laughs> and I know this kid wants to win a race in the dry, full dry, no conditions, right, no nothing, right, right, right. all that stuff. Sure. Uh, I, I, I know that that's what he wants. Yeah, of course. You don't want an asterisk by no, it. You know, I, you don't want to, like we heard in his interview earlier saying, well, you know, Josh Hayes, he had a, you know, that jump start jump penalty. Start. I didn't feel like I won it. And and he'll, he'll you know, look, a win is a win is a win. An attack performance going on this kind of, you know, win streak, I guess you could say, at this moment. He doesn't need to put an asterisk because no. everyone's faced with exactly the same conditions. Yep. And you have to have all the tools in your toolbox to win a race. And the first tool that he broke out was Jackrabbit start and yep. made it work. Yeah, but he does that. He's, he's so good at just getting out there and, and having to go. And that's what, you, that's what you need to do. And talking to Matthew Stoltz, he, you know, Matthew said one of the things he needs to work on, he's happy with it in the rain, but he admitted as he woof, lose the front there yep. for a second, shaking his head. But Matthew's like, look, I have to work up to the speed. Yep. And that's why we've seen him in the rain. But the thing with Josh Heron is that he got such a commanding lead yep. that Josh or um, Matthew Skultz wasn't able to really chip away he's at it. A 28 second lead. Unreal. And, and and he's still doing 39s. That's <laughs> the thing that's crazy. He only ran a lap that last lap that was only 1.6 seconds off his slowest. Heron. Yeah. And, and and Matthew just he tried. He tried to make a push. He closed in a little bit, but it was just too much risk. This guy's cruising across the line doing a 40.1, looking around thinking to himself, Wow, this this race is just actually been very very easy in my opinion this is the best i've ever seen josh ride in this race i mean it really awesome. hasn't put a wheel wrong as for cameron bobier he's sitting on uh, if he can finish in the position he's in now third place that's 16 points you add that to his 56 i'm no genius but that's 72 points with uh, tony elias scoring zero in that one that means that you know he needed 75 to wrap up the championship today so he's going to be a couple short but Man, the Paddy's going to have tomorrow because all he needs to do is just walk out with 50. That's so right. all, all, all Cam's going to really have to do is just like finish uh, probably somewhere like 13th spot that's right. in order to wrap up the championship tomorrow. Yeah, no, that's it's exactly right. And, uh, then it'll be a free for all. I, yeah, it's going to be. And, and, and tomorrow will be. We're hearing kind of maybe. The uh oh. Support. Yeah, it's just so easy to lose your focus. It's yeah, so yeah, easy yeah. to lose your concentration <laughs> on the final and, lap. Uh, yeah, that's. That's not what he wanted to do, especially with a what 32 second lead yeah, now. Yeah. He just wants to cruise around. But when you slow down, sometimes it just it yeah. you just get wandering. It's hard to explain. It's you want to try to keep your mental focus up as much as you can all the time. But it's just so easy to make little mistakes. Who wheelies better than this guy? Uh, no one. I mean, he is absolutely <laughs> spectacular. I just, I just want him to come across the line, and then he can do his wheelies. You know, yeah, that's really. the big thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't want to Larry and loop this, out. And this stuff here, it's just you're so iffy. Well, he splits his time between Dublin, Georgia, and California. Attack performance, Heron compound. Josh Heron. There you go. Coming to the line, and will take the victory here, race number one in the Motul Superbike class. And he does it in fine style. In He's going to have a style. very, very lonely victory lap because yeah. there is no one <laughs> close. No one close. Nobody to congratulate him for this, sure. This is but how about this, Matthew Skoltz? This is what this team needed. This team needed a good, solid podium. He made that push. He tried to catch Josh. He was just not doing that today. So Matthew's going to come across the line. He has a look over his shoulder. Sees nobody around him, and he's going to come across the line and take a, a solid second spot for the Yamalube Westby team.
his seventh podium of the season for that team in second spot. And for Skultz, that'll be his second second place finish. So a win, two seconds and four third place finishes for the Amalou Westby Racing and this guy right here. Cameron, if he hasn't done the math, he's gonna be, he's gonna be happy enough with this result today in third. And you can see him shaking his head. He actually just looked like he lost the front even on the last lap going through that little turn. This might be one of those races where he just goes, the happy that's over. That it's over. Just yep. counting laps this halfway, that's you know, exactly just, right. just going like another one, another one. And look at Raj actually caught Cameron Peterson <sighs> in the closing laps. And let's see, Cameron's trying to do everything he can to go back past, but Raj gonna finish fourth place. Good result for Raj as he caught, you know, we saw a shot of him with three to go. Like, look like he had his head down still trying to catch up. 42-5 for Raj in that last lap and yep. a 43-9 for Cam. Uh, I'm sorry, 42-7 for Cameron Peterson. So yeah, that looked like that went on. Uh, two laps, like that last two laps. So Josh Heron waving to the crowd in a fantastic race victory. In a long race. You know, our wow. normal dry races are, say, 32 minutes long, yeah. you know, 38 minutes. But, you know, Jason, when we look at this rain stuff, there's really two factors we look at for, you know, uh, physical exhaustion, yep. mental exhaustion. You know, when you race these, the guys I was talking to said, well, it's easier on the body, no yes. question about it. And if you're relaxed, it's easier on the brain, but some riders get so tense that it can really yeah. drain you, right? Like and the recovery on the mental side is gonna be a long night for some riders. No, it's exactly right. And it's hard to hold your concentration for that long. And especially when you don't have a lot of grip, like we're not at a place where you can see these guys knee down everywhere. Like and with, and so it definitely taxes you more mentally this kind of race than it does physically. Outstanding Motul Superbike race today for number two, Josh Heron. Attack performance, Heron compound. In the record books, it's going to go in as a 37.1 second victory, <laughs> which Jason is going to crush That's me. Cru it'll crush me my statistics next year when I look at like the races and I say, oh, That's right. this race was one tenth, two tenths, and this race is going to blow out my stats. No yeah, question about 37 it. 37 seconds. I couldn't even tell you last time I've seen anything like that. No. So you can see Cam Bobier, Peterson, and uh, Matthew Skultz have all got together. Matthew Skultz and Cam Peterson in 2014 raced the championship together in South Africa. And last night at the dinner table, Matthew Skultz was just praising how talented Cam Peterson is as a rider. He is. And I think great result for him. The Superbike class rookie, fifth place in the rain conditions. Hopefully more to come in the next three races from the Genuine Broster Chicken Honda team. But congratulations all around.